Hey, all, welcome back to the Real Life Pharmacology Podcast. I'm your host, pharmacist Eric Christensen. And today on this podcast, I'm going to be covering uh, the combination of budesonide and formoterol. Now, the brand name of this medication is Symbicort, and of course, uh, I am talking about the uh, inhaled dosage form. Uh, I do have another podcast on budesonide specifically, which is the oral uh, formulation used in, in Crohn's and ulcerative colitis, so you can check that out. Uh, on this episode specifically, I'm going to focus on uh, the inhalation uh, form of the uh, drug combination here. So mechanistically, uh, formoterol is a long-acting beta agonist. And how this drug works in the, the combination is it activates beta-2 receptors in the lungs. And this causes a smooth muscle relaxation uh, in the lungs and bronchioles and allows uh, the opening up of that airway and hence allows a patient uh, to breathe a, a little bit easier. Now, budesonide is a corticosteroid. Uh, I've you know, kind of covered that in, in that other podcast as far as mechanism of action goes. Uh, but ultimately, um, in uh, asthma particularly, uh, there is a large component of inflammation in that airway. And that can sometimes uh, happen in, in COPD as well. Uh, but Inhaled corticosteroids are one of the mainstays in um, chronic maintenance treatment in uh, asthma therapy. And they are good because they uh, reduce that inflammation. That's how the, the steroids work there. Now, the one reason, one of the big reasons I wanted to, to cover this medication is we have had some recent guideline changes in the last year or so here, year or two, and particularly in uh, the setting of asthma. Uh, so we have um, new recommendations saying that it is okay to use uh, budesonide and formoterol combination, uh, one inhalation as needed up to uh, 12 times per day for an acute exacerbation. Now this totally flies in the face of uh, what I was taught all throughout school in the last uh, you know, 20, 30 years of inhaled corticosteroid therapy for asthma. Because uh, it was, you know, preached and, and definitely thought that the inhaled corticosteroids um, should not be used in an as-needed acute exacerbation uh, type situation because they, you know, may take a, a little while to work. Well, with uh, Symbicort specifically in the formoterol um, component, this drug, even though it's a long-acting beta agonist, has a very quick onset of action. So the formoterol uh, takes up to, uh, you know, minutes. So maybe like three to three to five minutes to really begin working and have an onset of action, which obviously, you know, could be helpful in an acute exacerbation uh, situation. Now, when you compare that to something like uh, Advair, for example, which has salmeterol in it, so that's a combination uh, inhaled corticosteroid and long-acting beta agonist, so meterol has a uh, initial effect uh, that takes uh, several minutes, probably up to 30 to 45 minutes. And you could imagine somebody with uh, acute exacerbation, difficulty breathing, uh, that's obviously a very long time and an inappropriate time to wait uh, for somebody needing uh, symptom relief quickly. So uh, the new global initiative uh, for asthma guidelines uh, allows for the use of a budesonide uh, for motor all combination uh, in management of uh, an acute exacerbation of asthma. So really, really big change. Um, definitely a, a practice um, changing guideline update uh, that you definitely uh, should be aware of and obviously, you know, read a little bit more on it as well if, if this is news to you at this point. Uh, sticking kind of with the, the theme of, of the podcast, uh, I do want to cover adverse effects of long-acting beta agonists. I'll do that briefly. Uh, so that would be the formoterol component. Uh, remember that um, beta receptors are found on the heart as well as the, the vessels. So you can get um, an increase in heart rate with uh, beta agonist activity. Um, kind of with that, blood pressure can, can go up as well. 
I think I mentioned that, you know, beta uh, receptors are on the, the vessels. Uh, definitely not as prominent as, as alpha receptors. I did want to mention that. Um, tremor uh, can be a, a potential um, adverse effect. So this is generally if, if people are taking many, many doses uh, of that beta agonist. Uh, but it is something to look out for. And, you know, the drug can can kind of, you know, amp people up a little bit. Uh, so insomnia, anxiety um, are potential uh, adverse effects as well. Again, the more and more you take of this, the less potentially selective it is. And the more likely you're, you're going to run into some of the side effects mentioned there. Uh, adverse effects, inhaled corticosteroids. Now, systemically, uh, they aren't absorbed to a great extent. You know, when you compare it to taking, let's say, oral prednisone, for example. Uh, so we we don't worry about those, um, you know, osteoporosis risk and increasing blood sugars. We don't worry about them quite as much, uh, definitely, with the inhaled uh, corticosteroids. Uh, but we do definitely educate patients about the risk for thrush. And it's important, obviously, to rinse your mouth uh, after using these agents. Uh, there are also some, you know, upper respir vague upper respiratory symptoms that might happen, uh, may bother some people. You know, you may see uh, a little more cough or a sore throat, um, things along those lines as well as far as adverse effect uh, profile goes. So let's take a quick break from our sponsor, and then we will get into uh, drug interactions. Uh, if you're in the market, uh, pharmacist uh, for board certification study materials, uh, if you're looking for good uh, clinical case-based content, maybe you're a, a growing, budding a new practitioner, pharmacist, nurse practitioner, uh, med student, uh, definitely check out all the resources at meded101.com slash store, S-T-O-R-E. Uh, different books on, on Amazon. We've got Audible books available as well, uh, as well as all those uh, study materials for BCPS, BCACP, uh, MTM certification exam now, uh, geriatric certification exam, and of course uh, links to uh, our new website, RxGrad, uh, for NAPLEX material. So uh, yeah, go support the sponsor. Uh, check those resources out. I think you'll find them really, really helpful um, for whatever you're uh, trying to uh, prepare for. And again, that's at meded101.com slash store. So finishing up here on drug interactions, uh, one of the first ones I think about uh, from a mechanistic standpoint uh, is the beta agonist potential um, and the potential for that drug to be blunted by beta blockers. And generally, more specifically, uh, non-selective beta blockers. So if we've got a non-selective beta blocker, that's going to um, block beta-2 receptors from being activated by the long-acting beta-2 agonist. Uh, also, obviously, um, you know, selective beta blockers that, you know, primarily target beta-1 receptors, that isn't quite as concerning um, in, you know, blunting the effects of these uh, respiratory agents. Uh, important, uh, really, really important point, and I've seen this in practice several times um, where clinicians either aren't paying attention or, you know, maybe they see specialty or maybe there's formulary changes. I have definitely seen patients who are taking um, duplicate therapy in the uh, respiratory world. So, you know, Symbacort and, and Advair, for example, uh, you know, it, Asmonex, you know, inhaled corticosteroid combination, or excuse me, Asmonex and, and inhaled corticosteroid in combination, you know, with another um, combination agent like uh, budesonide and, and formoterol. Uh, so if you aren't sure of brand names and, and what's in those medications and you know, therefore, you know, let's say asthma or COPD, definitely double check, make sure you're using uh, different mechanisms of action. Uh, with this updated guideline, there may be an exception to that. Um, you could potentially see, uh, you know, budesonide and, and formoterol used as needed, let's say for an acute exacerbation with a patient who's maybe on maintenance uh, Advair taking that, you know, once or twice daily. So it, important to recognize that, that those duplications can happen, but uh, important to assess 
uh, with our patients if they are uh, using them appropriately and not uh, doubling up in an inappropriate manner. So definitely some complications there to, to keep an eye out and, and look for. Uh, we do have, uh, with the budesonide, some CYP3A4 uh, in a, uh, inhibitors uh, drug interactions. So uh, a lot of the azole antifungals, uh, clarithromycin, some of the HIV drugs, lopinavir, ritonavir. Uh, these can actually increase the concentration uh, of that uh, budesonide. Now, how clinically significant is it, you know, in a patient that's maybe taking PRN budesonide for Motorol? It's probably not a, a major, major issue uh, in an acute situation. Uh, patients taking it, it more chronically just recognize that we could have a little bit higher concentrations uh, of the budesonide. Um, formulation or the, the budesonide drug in the combination there. Uh, one other unique one that I, I did want to cover uh, is desmopressin. Uh, this uh, desmopressin can um, cause hyponatremia and there is potential that uh, corticosteroids um, could potentially exacerbate or worsen this. Uh, so it is something to look out for Again, desmopressin isn't used incredibly often um, in clinical practice, um, but definitely something to uh, kind of think about and monitor there. Uh, that's going to wrap it up for today. Obviously, with drug interactions, there there are you know numerous numerous lists of, of drug interactions. I try to highlight ones that um, really come up in clinical practice or could potentially uh, come up in, in clinical practice. So obviously take that with a, a grain of salt there. Um, but if you're enjoying the podcast, um, enjoying the information you're, you're getting here, definitely go support our sponsor, uh, meded101.com slash store. Uh, also got a free giveaway. Uh, reallifepharmacology.com. You can get a uh, cheat sheet, basically a top uh, 200 drug list uh, that lists out um, important clinical pearls uh, from each of those drugs, really highly testable pearls. Uh, be a great resource for students and pharmacists who are taking uh, exams there for sure. So go check that out at reallifepharmacology.com. Uh, if you enjoy the show, leave us a rating, review on iTunes or wherever you're listening. I'm so appreciative of, of those that have taken the time to, to do that. And, um, you know, really proud of, of the ratings that, that we've got with the show. And obviously hope to uh, uh, keep up that, that credibility and that, that high rating by providing uh, good content uh, each week for you. Trying to learn and, and pick up uh, new pearls from uh, medications. So I'm going to sign off for today. Thanks so much for listening. Uh, take care. Have a great rest of your day.